Nothing throws more light on a man than the use he makes of his garden, but few are more interested in moonshine than in sunshine. Mr. Percy Wilkins is the exception. He's made a life study of the moon. The pride of his garden is his 18-inch telescope. It's 21 years ago since the lens of his homemade telescope was first focused on the moon, and each of those years has been for Mr. Wilkins a milestone. A milestone which has marked the progress of one of the strangest explorations ever undertaken by man, for in those 21 years he's charted every mountain range, crater, and dried up seabed on the face of the moon. Many of his researches, Mr. Wilkins is helped by his daughter, but his work is by no means confined to his home. Because of his achievements, the observatories at Cambridge and Moudon near Paris have been opened up to him, and he's been made director of the lunar section of the British Astronomical Association. magic in his evenings, he likes to speculate on what's hidden on the other side of the moon, on the mountains, some of them higher than Everest, which can be glimpsed when it sways. But for him, the telescope's only a tool. His main work only starts when his moon gazing is finished. It is then that he gets down to his maps. Percy Wilkins' map of the moon is a classic, which is as important to those who study the heavens as the work of the geographers who first showed us the shape of the Earth. Many of the place names have been chosen by himself. To its details, he is constantly adding. The first lunar chart he made was scaled at 7.2 miles to the inch, but greater knowledge has enabled him to compress the details to give a better overall picture. But why map the moon at all? Well, it'll be needed by the first spaceship to land on the Earth satellite, and the crew of that ship will be able to rely on Wilkins' work for their bearings. <laughs> 